there are a couple things I want to get across I want to try to share that are going to help you out they helped me out when I tried to understand it and one of them when it relates to your compressors is a term entrainment and I define entrainment as the pulling along of propane liquid droplets suspended in propane vapor our compressors deal exclusively with propane vapor they're not designed to compress propane liquid the fact is is you we just really can't get rid of 100 percent the presence of propane liquid droplets suspended in vapor so because they exist and we have to deal with them we had to figure out a way to neutralize them so they don't come and damage our equipment and cause us problems and so I'm going to erase this definition that I've got um, if somebody else has a better definition let me know but that's how I that's how I define it and I can only share with you the way I understand things so not saying that this is the end-all be-all I'm not saying this is the best definition that you're ever going to come across but this is how I understand it and so entrainment define is and um, explains what's going on this is going to be a cross section of a piece of vapor piping and let's say it's a nice 60 degree day outside and this is static it's just a vapor pipe full of vapor and inside there inside there it's 60 degrees this is going to be a gross exaggeration but there's going to be the presence of some droplets of liquid propane and here at the start I want to say I may mess up and say water droplets I really mean liquid propane droplets so I mess up I say what I shouldn't say I mean liquid propane droplets those of you who got your introduction into propane as being a propane serviceman or a propane bulk delivery you know about the concept or you should know the concept of a wetted surface and the principle of a wetted surface is that it's the metal the outside air temperature is transferred to the product inside by going through the metal the side of the wall so it's essentially it's whether it's vapor or liquid principle is the same that it's you know this is our point of contact with our product is the wall of our pipe and that also you should remember or should have been taught that when you run high pressure regulator from your tank to your house and it goes from above ground to below ground to back above ground as the rule of thumb this should never be more than 15 psi simply because they want at 15 psi and above you increase your odds of these little liquid droplets coalescing and dropping out of the vapor and becoming liquid somewhere in a low spot in this line and you never ever ever want liquid going up into the house and that's why a traditional standard high pressure regulator at your house is 10 psi on outlet and there's some places where it's really really cold they get their winters are protracted and cold they may drop this down to 5 psi and just run with a bigger line all to avoid what we're talking about which is the formation the accumulation of liquid propane in vapor service so now here we are we got a nice 60 degree day these things are really spread out and they're usually going to be very small well as the temperature drops if nothing else changes we go from a 60 degree day to a 30 degree night what's going to happen 
is the density of the product inside this pipe is going to change. This pipe's going to go from being meh, somewhat dense. Now it's going to slowly, as it cools down, as the temperature change radiates through the steel and gets in here and changes the temperature of the product, that's going to get more and more and more and more dense. As it gets as its density increases, it slowly starts pulling down more vapor from the top of the tanks so that this pipe just will continue to fill itself up and, and maintain a density based on the temperature and the specific gravity. Now what's going to happen is our water droplet... Or, there, did it. Damn! Alright, these liquid droplets are going to slowly start going toward each other and because this is the biggest temperature difference right in here this is going to this this is going to change in temperature first and the product closest to it is going to change in temperature first till it gets into here so let's just say make life easy we're going these are all going to come together and they're going to make bigger droplets and bigger droplets make bigger droplets until eventually they go to the side and then when they get big enough heavy enough just like dew on the side of a bottle it'll end up going to the bottom and eventually, if it gets bad enough, we'll start actually accumulating liquid propane right down there in the bottom of your pipe. And if this were to drop again in time, nothing else changes in time, you go from 30 degrees to zero degrees, this is going to increase even more. Simply because as you, this gets more and more and more dense because of the cold, it's going to continue to pull vapor from the top of the tanks. And it's always going to want to, you know, maintain itself vapor full, and this is just going to continue. And there's no place for this liquid to go except to keep accumulating on the bottom. And, it's, and the opposite is also going to be true, as the, if this everything stays static and our temperature goes from 0 to 30, and then eventually 30 to 60, these water droplets, instead of following the path from smaller to bigger they go from bigger to smaller and then as this thing gets less and less and less and less dense it's creating more and more pressure and it slowly pushes vapor back up into the top of the tanks and eventually in time all this will just boil off and it'll be gone we don't live in that world we don't work in that world so what we're dealing with is as our compressors run they're pulling out of this vapor pipe and so this is no longer static this is all in motion all the time as our compressors are running and so we have not only the change because that's what happens let's say this is this dense static as soon as you run your compressor and your compressor begins to pull off this becomes immediately less dense pressure drop less dense and so as that gets pulled along it pulls more out of the top of your tanks all these droplets now get pulled along by your compressor so that's our entrainment 60 degree day and some 30 degree days it's so little it's so minimal it amounts really to nothing it's on the days when it amounts to something that we have to really be concerned about. So, yeah, let's see what I can draw here. You've got your vapor pipe down here. Got your compressor over here. You got your motor got your actual compressor itself and it's got its uh four-way valve running right in there and you got your piping coming down on the top of it and your piping runs down over to here and then you have your liquid trap is sitting over here and this four-way valve runs into here and this runs off to the top now hell it runs over to here doesn't it let's get rid of that not to scale nothing's to scale this my art sucks and that's why I don't do any math C's and D's in math and I don't want to advertise that here in a video so anyway here we are we have all of this liquid 
and you got to do something with it. Well, a typical winter day, let's just say it's a, it's a nice, easy winter day. This is 30 degrees. Once this compressor is up and running, this compressor itself is not 30 degrees. This compressor is going to start getting warmer and warmer and warmer throughout the day. And as you know, if you're working with piping to any degree, wherever we make a turn, see this is probably going to be a welded elbow, so that's going to be a sweep when it comes across here. When you drop down, whenever you change direction, those little water droplets are going to have a place to hit and a place to be a little turbulent, and they're going to want to condense and condense and condense. And so they'll come and they'll make their way through here. This four-way valve is going to be warm and it's going to dump in here into your liquid holding trap. If you have a cork and uh, trap up here at the top, they've got a stainless steel mesh and it flows out the top and goes over here. Well, what this does is as your vapor comes running through here, it gets turned by this, gets turned again going in, and as the compressor pulls off the top, it's going to hit and it's going to coalesce on that stainless steel mesh. It's going to get heavy enough and it's going to drop down to the bottom. Uh, you may, I don't know if you know it or not, or you'll see it on the Corkin website, but if you have a Corkin liquid trap, you're going to have a, uh, I think it's half inch pipe plug, one here and about 20 some inches up to another. They sell a sight glass, sight tube, that you can mount right in here and you can see your liquid level inside here. But they also, down here, they also have um, my cork, my one from Corkin has two float switches. This first float switch, just a simple float, is a warning. It's, it's connected to a light on top of my compressor. If I get so much liquid in there, it trips the float, I get a strobe light going. You can hook it up to a horn, you can hook it up to a siren. You can hook it up to something. The second one is a kill. So if it gets up to my second one, it lifts the float, shuts the compressor down. Corkin has a drain valve down in here. And then it pipes away a little bit, depending on, I don't know what you've got, but you'll have some general rule of thumb, the standard way guys deal with it is periodically during startup. And this tends to be your worst trouble your first 30 to 45 minutes and when you start your day tends to be doesn't mean it doesn't mean it'll go away during the day it's just that it tends to be worse in the or in the uh, first startup stage because what a lot of guys will do is they'll just open up that drain valve to see if there's any liquid and if there is they just open it up and they just let it drain well if you're wide enough open spaces you don't have any neighbors nearby you can probably get away with it if you know you're just wasting product but better to waste product than have damage to your compressor another thing some guys will do and maybe you do is they'll run a rubber hose from this shutoff valve all the way to the top of a, of a tower and then when they open up and they drain it it gets they just vent it at the top of a tower so now you're up above the ground 14 16 feet and has more room to dissipate and go away and Try not to cause a problem. That's fine. That works. That's what you got. So it's what works. Go with what works. There's a couple problems, though, to keep in mind. One is you're wasting a lot of product. Product that you paid for. Product that you intended to resell. And it's, it's a shame to just waste your product there's got to be a better way and the second thing is what if you have neighbors maybe your neighbor doesn't care but if that neighbor who obviously probably doesn't know very much about propane looks up one day and you're draining off say three gallons of liquid propane 3 times 270 is 6 is uh, 810 cubic uh, gallons of vapor. He sees this great big white fog shoot up off of your equipment and start drifting toward his property. Probably aren't going to make too many friends doing that. 
you may also lower your reputation that you have out there with your neighbors and with the people that you work with so there's got to be a way to try to collect that I have my way of doing it I'll share it here in a very very simple form I strongly suggest that if it is at all possible practicable at your location that you come up with a way to recover all of that propane and not lose it it, it's it's smart now and then you got to also deal with other people uh, who don't know anything about propane you may be first responders maybe oh yeah another thing we fall under uh, oversight of the Department of Homeland Security nobody in there is going to know anything about propane then the EPA nobody in there is going to know anything about propane and if you it you reveal that hey you know what do you do when you got a problem well we just dump propane on the ground that's that's a lot of fun that's not going to impress anybody either so what i do and this is also a not two dimensions a gross uh, over simplification i have a 330 gallon domestic home tank that I repurposed I took that tank I took out I swapped out valves to do what I want I have three 891 compressors at my place so I have here where there was the drain valve I added some piping and I put a two inch sight glass with a back check right here so that product can only go one direction it can only go out of my compressor no matter what I can't get pressure coming in on the back side and then there's a shutoff valve out on this end and then the, it gives me two big advantages one it's a sight glass as long as I keep that flat vibrating any liquid in here will dribble in here and begin to accumulate in that sight glass so when my sight glass gets half full, I know, okay, it's, I, I, I have product to drain, so I need to go drain it. And then this hose runs around and dumps into the top end of this 330. And then it just sprays. It's all it does, just sprays right in there. <clears throat> I have a 330 simply because I bought it, I was able to get it for $200. I, <clears throat> I would prefer to have a 500 gallon tank if you're looking for a tank and you know you don't have something like that look for a used 500 gallon tank with a missing data plate as long as the tank is sound as long as the tank is solid I personally would not have a problem putting a tank without a data plate in there simply because 95, 97% of the life of this tank is going to sit there with no pressure in it. It only gets used periodically. Other than that, it's got nothing in it. Your risk factor is really low. Plus, you can buy one of these just for scrap price. And let's say one of these weighs, um, I don't know, 1,500 pounds. Depends on how old it is. Scraps $200 a ton. 175 bucks, you got yourself a good tank. Uh, something to consider <coughs> excuse me so I will jump and drain it in there and then these things as far as we're concerned as far as our biggest risk to the compressors is during offload that's our that's our biggest risk there's a secondary risk and that comes when you do recovery In recovery, we see this. Now, this is, represents mine. Uh, my main vapor trunk line is lower to the ground. Yours may be up here at the very top of your tanks. So your pipe may come down like this. If it's up there, you will probably have fewer problems than I do overall. 
So wherever yours is coming from. But when you're doing this, remember we still have, we're draining out the worst of all of these liquid droplets. We're not getting all of it. We don't want to get all of it. We don't care. All we want is enough to protect the integrity of our compressor. So you're shoving it and you're pushing it in your pipes, up your towers, into your rail cars. What's going to happen is, is wherever you drop down or transition and go up, you're somewhere in your piping, you're going to have low spots. In that low spot, there you're going to start accumulating liquid. It's just inevitable. It, or if you have a length of line, let's say you're like me, you can do four cars and you're only offloading two or three, that means one of your towers is acting like a deadhead. What's going to happen is products is going to pulsate up there, the compressors are just going to pulsate it up in there, and then these droplets are just going to accumulate and they're going to start building up in this part of your piping. At this point, we really don't care. It's not a threat, not an issue to us. Just keep in mind that when you switch over and go into recovery and you start, instead of shoving in these pipes, you're now pulling out of these pipes, you're going to begin to boil off all the liquid that is accumulated in any of the low spots in your piping. It may boil off really quickly, it may boil off all at once, or it may do it really slowly. That you're, you are going to have some in there if you have any really low spots or if you have any deadhead section of piping. So just keep that in mind. And it's a risk when you come and you run back through your compressor. But it's hard to quantify it. I'd say if, the, if your offload is a risk on a scale of 1 to 10, this is actually a 10. Your risk of getting liquid in during your offload is really high. When you do recovery, I'd say your risk is probably a 2. It's a lot lower, but it's still there. And you still got to be mindful of it and be aware of it and try to account for it. So, I'm set up here, I've got another valve. When I switch my four-way valve and I go to recovery and I run my compressors to begin to recover the rail cars, I open up one valve right here and there's another hose that comes over here and it connects to my vapor piping, my vapor trunk line, on the other side of my compressor. So that it's tied to the same piping that's connected to my rail car. So as I pull and recover my rail cars, I pull vapor off of the top of this tank and I recover it and I pull its pressure down to the same pressure I pull my cars. If I, if I only have five to maybe 20 gallons of liquid in here, I'll boil it off and it will, it'll be super easy, no problem. Every once in a while, you can get a lot of liquid in your system. My system, you can get a lot. Yours, you may be surprised how much you get. If I get too much liquid in here, while I'm still doing offload, I have a liquid withdrawal valve here, and this liquid withdrawal valve is tied into my liquid trunk line at my tanks. So while I'm doing offload, and I'm still shoving with my compressors, and this is still hard pressure going in. I can open up a valve here, open this up, open up a valve here, and I can push all of my liquid out with my compressors. And get all the liquid pushed out of this tank. When I get all the liquid out, I shut this valve off. I can shut this valve off, shut this valve off. Now this tank is pressurized, and when I go in recovery, I open this back up, drain it all right back out. That's what I do. Like I said, it's an extremely simplified version of it, but I lose not an ounce. I don't, I don't even lose one ounce of liquid propane through all of my recovery, through all of my stuff, through everything that I do. So it's been an investment. Uh, this is my fourth version of this because I've been trying to fine-tune it and improve it over the years and really like it. So I would encourage you if possible to go ahead and do that at your place. 
Now, and the last thing I want to talk about on entrainment is how to prevent this. Or, man, well, maybe that's not accurate. How to minimize this for the next day. How do you do future you a huge favor? Well, what we need to do is we need to try to prevent this from accumulating liquid droplets during the night. So what I do, with the way my system is, shut, is set up, is I shut off all of my vapor valves going into my vapor trunk line while I'm in offload. So I'm offloading and I know by my timer my cars are virtually done. What I'll do is I'll wait until my cars are empty and you go open up the sample line to prove that the car is empty, even though you got a lot of liquid still flowing through your sight glasses up at the towers. You open it up, you prove, okay, I proved that car is empty. So now I know I've got a few minutes before my glasses go clear. So I come all the way down, I shut off all of my valves going into that vapor trunk line, run my compressors, and it's pretty common on a winter's day to have maybe 60 to 70 PSI inside my vapor trunk line, my vapor piping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this compressor and I'm going to pull this down. And remember what I touched on earlier, you got a certain density. A product in there and we started off very dense and once the compressors began to run the product became less dense as we were pulling it along well we want to make it even less dense we want to separate as many of those propane liquid droplets as far away from each other as possible so you'll take this and then you run your compressor until you pull this down you can try stopping at 30 pounds and then the next day check it and if you've got liquid well you probably should have recovered it a little bit lower normally I pull down I pull this down every night to 15 to 20 pounds of pressure inside my vapor piping here even if I go sub-zero during the night on temperature that has always worked for me I have in the past pulled that down to zero. It hasn't really proven to be worth the extra time it takes to do it. And another thing is maybe you still have some liquid laying down. Now mine, on my system, because I my vapor trunk line's lower to the ground, I have a drain. I've installed a drain in here, and I can physically drain any liquid anytime I want to out of this trunk line straight into my 330 can do it whenever I want well even if some were to accumulate in here and you pull this down to 15 to 20 psi and you freeze the bottom of that pipe during the night it'll just boil off and it'll will accomplish everything you still want to do so entrainment is a fact of life we can't get rid we just can't get rid of it this is how I understand it, and this is how I deal with it. I hope it's been some help. I hope it, if you can follow that or modify it, just think about it. And if it's something that'll work for you, good. Happy to help. Thanks.